Hello, so in this video we're going to be looking at thirds. Uh, we're going to start off with thinking what is a third and then we'll move on to the rules of thirds and finally we'll look at rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so we start with what is a third. Well, a third is a square root which doesn't have a nice whole number answer. So if I have root 2, you know, nothing nice comes out of that. Whereas if I have the square root of 4, I get the nice whole number 2. So root 4 isn't a third, and root 2 is a third. Uh, the rules for thirds. So uh, the first one we uh, look at is one with multiplication. So if we look at this and we have a number, and the number can be factorized into two different numbers, we can then split our root into the root of one of the numbers times the root of the number, another number. Now the key thing to doing these is to try and spot a nice square number because what you're trying to do is simplify it. So if you can see a square number in your number then you can take it out, you can take its square root and it's easier. So looking at here, I've got root 20, hopefully you can see that that's the same as 4 times 5, 4 being a nice square number. So we get root 4 times root 5, and then root 4 becomes just 2, so it's 2 root 5. Okay, the second rule is about division, and basically when you have a number which is one number divided by another, you can then take the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So looking at this example here, Hopefully you can see we've got 100 over 4, which would be 25. If we took the square root of 25, we would get 5. So what have we done? We've split here the, the root into the root of the numerator over the root of the denominator. Um, and then the square root of 100 will give you 10, and the square root of 4 gives you 2, and 10 divided by 2 gives you 5 as expected. Obviously, we wouldn't normally have such nice numbers, which we could just do in our heads. Um, the third rule we're going to look at is the adding elephants rule. Um, if we have so many root c's plus so many other root c's, we have the total number of root c's. So 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2 would give me 7 root 2. Uh, you need to remember this. Now, I always say to my students, this is something I repeat over and over again, you just need to know the root of the number times the root of the same number gives you the number. So here, if I had root 5 times root 5, I can put those together inside my root. So that's 5 times 5 is 25, and then the square root of 25 is 5. So the root of the number times the root of the number gives you the number. Okay, so here's a few questions. They're not too difficult. Um, if you want to pause and give them a go on your own, please do and join us when you're ready. Okay, so first of all, my 75. So in 75, um, I can see that there's a 25 hidden. So 25 is my square number. So 25 times 3 gives me the 75. I then split it into the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 25 gives me 5, so I get 5 root 3. 12 can be split into 4 times 3, and we've chosen 4, because we could have done 6 and 2. But 6 and 2 isn't very nice, because neither of them would then get nicer when you took the square root. So taking the square root of 4 gives you 2, and leaves you with the square root of 3, root 3. So it gives you 2 root 3 is the answer. Here's it's just elephant, so root 5 plus 2 root 5 in total gives you 3 root 5. And here um, we've got root 27 over root 3. We can split the 27 and the 9 times 3. Um, and then the, splitting that, that's root 9 times root 3, so that's 3 root 3 over 3 cancels to 3. Of course, we could have just put this inside a big root and said 27 over 3 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. Another thing to remember is that root 4 gives the positive root of 4. Um, people get confused with this because you think of x squared equals 4, and you all know that the answer to this, x could be either plus 2 or minus 2. But if you want to show the negative root, you need to actually put the minus in. So if it just says root 4, it's always the positive root. Um, 
Okay, in the next section, I'm sorry, I'm speeding through all of this, and if you want to pause and or go back or re-listen, um, that's of course fine, um, is rationalizing the denominator of a third. Now, what we're trying to do is get rid of the third in the denominator. Um, and we do this basically by multiplying by what's ever on the denominator, because the root of the number times the root of the number gives you the number. Now, we don't want to change our number, so if we're going to multiply the bottom by root 2, to get rid of the root 2, we must multiply the top by root 2. So this is the same as uh, root 3 times root 2, and so we can put them together is root 6. So it's root 6 over 2. Um, so don't forget, you must, if you multiply the bottom to get rid of the, the third, you must multiply the top by the same thing. Now, slightly harder one, um, you need to remember what the difference in uh, difference of two squares is. And if you don't remember this, or if you've forgotten, you should look it up. But basically, when we have a squared minus b squared, it factorizes to a minus b times a plus b. So if we look at this, we get a times a is a squared, a times plus b is a b minus b times a is minus a b, so the a b term disappears, and then minus b times b would give you minus b squared. So a squared minus b squared can be factorized into a minus b times a plus b. So what we do to get rid of, again, we're trying to get rid of the third in the denominator. We want to get rid of that root 2. Now, if we square the root 2, we get 2, because the root of the number times the root of the number gives you the number. So if we look at this, if we multiply this by 3 minus root 2, we're going to get 3 squared minus root 2 squared. So we're going to get 3 squared minus root 2 squared. Um, and then the middle terms disappear. And so we end up on the bottom, 9 minus 2, which is 7. So here we've got it here. So we've got 2 over 3 plus root 2. We multiply it by 3 minus root 2, remembering that if we multiply the bottom by something, because we don't want to change our number, we're just writing it in a different form, we must multiply the top by the same thing. And then we multiply this out, we get 3 squared minus 2. And then we need to multiply the top out, so we get 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times minus root 2 is uh, minus 2 root 2. So we get 6 minus 2 root 2 for 7. And some people would argue that that isn't actually much nicer than what we started with. But if you were told to rationalize the denominator, that's uh, what you would end up with. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Goodbye.